Ah, uh, welcome back everybody. Don't worry, not much guitar today. Today we are not going to be playing guitar. Today we are just going to be reading about our friend Ren, the musician. Uh, over the weekend I released a new reaction to the uh, tale of Jenny and Screech. People really liked it, though I did make a big mistake in it. And you'll have to watch it yourself to find out what that mistake is. People really let me know that I made this mistake, which is great. That's what you're there for. Thank you very much. You make me better every day. But then a friend of mine in the in Earth, here in the real world, you all live on Earth too, presumably, told me, hey, Ren has Lyme disease. My friend has Lyme disease. She has been dealing with it for, I don't know, better part of a decade now. I know about her saga going through getting even just getting a diagnosis for Lyme disease. They think, oh, well, Lyme disease doesn't exist in California. It's like an East, Co East Coast corridor type of disease. Um, for people who don't know what Lyme disease is, it's you get a tick. Ticks are incredibly small insects that will get on you while you're hiking or you're out in the woods or anywhere where there's ticks. Maybe your dog brings one home and they bite you and you get this horrible chronic disease, Lyme disease, which can make you incredibly tired. It can make you uh, forgetful. My friend has all kinds of joint issues, elbows, knees. She's just constantly having to deal with more and more symptoms. So I looked it up and I saw that there is this article from the Daily Mail. Lyme disease forces musician to give up his dream career with Sony after devastating symptoms leave him bedbound for 23 hours a day. Ren Gill, 25, so he's seven years older now, which means he's 32, math, was signed by the music giants after they saw him busking, which is incredibly rare to see somebody busking, playing guitar and singing on the street, and then to offer them a record contract. Shortly afterwards, he started with flu-like symptoms and panic attacks. GPs initially diagnosed him with depression and chronic fatigue syndrome, diagnosed with Lyme disease after he sought specialist help in Brussels. That actually happened to my friend. She was, she like couldn't, she knew it was Lyme disease. It, it had been clear to her for a number of years, but like doctors wouldn't trust it. GPs, I think are general practitioners, um, are, are, they're not going to necessarily trust that you have Lyme disease. Oh, Lyme disease is really rare. It's in media. This person doesn't know what they're talking about. So uh, let's assume they have some other disease. So it sounds like it was hell for him to even get diagnosed. Ren Gill was healthy and active, spending six days a week in the gym until one morning in 2009, he woke up thinking he had the worst hangover he'd ever experienced. He has spent the last seven years trying to find out what was behind his devastating symptoms, which leave him bed bound for up to 23 three hours a day. It's like solitary confinement. When the 25 year old first visited his GP, he was diagnosed with depression and bipolar disorder before being told by doctors in 2011 he had chronic fatigue syndrome. So he got three diagnoses, diagnoses before he got the right one, it sounds like, maybe more. But last December, after seeking specialist medical advice in Brussels, he was finally diagnosed with the bacterial infection Lyme disease. Here we have this picture of him looking very youthful here. And here he is in bed. Yeah, that's apparently what it looks like. He said, my life changed overnight. I woke up one morning feeling like I'd been spiked. My personality disappeared. I was having muscle spasms and I kept having panic attacks. I thought it was just the flu, but the feeling didn't fade. I feel like I had a promising mu music career ahead of me. I just signed with Sony and was working on my album when my health really started to deteriorate. I used to go to the gym six days a week and was generally quite active, but now my leg muscles constantly ache and I'm always so drained. I stay in bed for 23 hours of the day. Some days are better than others, but a lot of the time, even when I've woken up from a long sleep, I can feel like I haven't slept in months. Mr. Gill from Brighton had dreamed of a career in music all of his life and was approached by a record label after being scouted when he was busking in Brighton in 09, just as his illness started. He then signed with Sony Records in 2010 and was working on making an album when his health deteriorated to the point where he was no longer able to carry on. When he was first hit by the symptoms of the then undiagnosed disease, he was studying music performance at Bath Spa University and was struggling to attend his lectures. But despite being left with next to no energy, he said recording music from his bedside is what has kept him sane, and he shares his self penned songs with thousands of fans on YouTube and Facebook. I'd always had a gut feeling that there was something physically wrong with me. I knew I wasn't depressed, and the antidepressants I was prescribed were just giving me insomnia. When I was finally diagnosed with Lyme disease, everything just seemed to make sense. It answered a lot of questions I'd had about my health. Music has always been my life. I'd always dreamed of having a career in it, and I feel like it's really kept me going through 
through all of this. Even now, I try to make music from my bed when I can. My one hope is to raise awareness of Lyme disease. I hope it becomes more widely known so people won't have to go through what I have. I'm so lucky to have had such amazing support from my mom and my girlfriend. Dr. Tim Brooks, head of Public Health England's Rare and Imported Pathogens Laboratory, which tests samples for Lyme disease, said diagnosing the disease was difficult as many of the symptoms are similar to other conditions. Blood tests can be carried out to confirm the diagnosis after a few weeks, but these can be negative in the early stages of the infection. That's also very true. Like you can get Lyme disease and test negative for the first couple weeks. A number of private laboratories abroad offer tests for Lyme disease, but the value of many of these tests has not been published or verified. For more information about Mr. Gill's future treatment, visit his GoFundMe page. And the article actually brings you to an old GoFundMe uh, that only has about 6,000 pounds on it right now that I believe his friend set up for him. But he actually set up his own, which has raised almost uh, twice the amount that he says he needs. He wrote an update about all the different things that have been going on in his treatment and how he's feeling. Uh, you can get the whole thing on my Patreon page. I'll read the main part here. And obviously, if you want to help him out, this is the GoFundMe to check out. It's really difficult for me to begin writing this, as I take a lot of pride in my ability to look after myself and find it very difficult to ask for help. For those of you who have followed my story for a while, you will know I've had ongoing battles with a chronic health problem since I was 19 years old. I can't even really scratch the surface on what it was like to lose most of my early 20s to debilitating mysterious health problems that left me trapped in my bed with debilitating pain and neurological issues. I felt like I missed out on so much of what were meant to be the years of my life, where I was growing up and discovering what it meant to be an adult. While friends were starting families, starting careers, socializing, I spent most of it inside the four walls of my bedroom, too tired and weak on most days to leave my bed. In crippling amounts of pain. This wasn't days or weeks, it was years. By my mid-twenties, I resigned to the fact that I wouldn't live to see the age of 30. I spent years trying to get answers, bouncing from doctor to doctor, only for them to scratch their heads and leave me with the diagnosis of ME. Okay, ME stands for myalgic encephalomyelitis. Chronic fatigue syndrome is essentially what ME is. During this time, I tried countless medical treatments, and when they failed, resorted to alternative health practitioners, spiritual healing practices, thousands of supplements, but just kept getting sicker and sicker. With each treatment that failed, my hope for a normal life would die a little bit more. In 2015, after suffering a huge crash, weighing only eight stone and going through months of stress-induced psychosis, I ended up raising enough money to see a specialist in Brussels who ran extensive tests and finally diagnosed me with Lyme disease. The problem was it had been misdiagnosed for so long that it had caused irreversible damage to my immune system. And even after treating the Lyme, I was left mostly disabled, with no way out. The only thing that really kept me going at this time was my love for music. In my last ditch effort to feel like my existence mattered, I started video blogging from my bed. I felt like I was going to die. At least shining a light on a terribly misunderstood and misdiagnosed condition would have counted for something. What I didn't know at the time was that giving back in that way would save my life. Purely by chance, a stem cell doctor found my videos online and offered me a free stem cell transplant. If I could make my way to LA. He told me this would help rebuild my immune system and make me strong enough to live a relatively normal life. After reading the email in shock, I booked a flight to Los Angeles the same week. I come from a poor family, so the cost of this kind of treatment in the hundreds of thousands was never in the realms of something I thought would be possible. A family going through the same treatment put me up in their house, and I went through a grueling six weeks of various intravenous medical treatments to build my body up to be strong enough to go through with the operation. At this point, I was already so weak and underweight from spending years trapped in bed. Finally, sure enough, I was strong enough, and the procedure went through without a glitch. I returned home weak, but very hopeful. Sure enough, bit by bit, my body started responding to treatment, and after a very rocky year, I started feeling strong enough to leave my house, start going to the gym, socialize, and eventually return to a career in music. It honestly was more than I could have asked for. I honestly can't explain what it's like to be given a second chance at life when you resign to dying in your 20s. With my newfound strategy, I started pouring myself entirely into music, and through the grace of what whatever higher power might be out there, did damn good at it as well. Videos of me performing with my friend Sam started going viral all over the internet. In my first year as an active member of society, I'd signed songs to major record labels, started a band, and sold out every single concert I ever put on. I do know uh, my good friend has had really similar trouble getting the diagnosis, getting medication, getting treatment. It seems like he got really good treatment. It seems like he's doing incredibly well. I know my friend has gotten good treatment uh, since, and she's doing a lot better. Um, it, there's definitely treatments for Lyme disease, um, but I don't know that there's a cure. Whereas if it's depression or bipolar or chronic fatigue, there might be, you know, a handbook. Okay, well, for this, we give you this pill. For this, we give you that pill. 
and et cetera, et cetera. What is interesting is that he says that he knew he wasn't depressed, but he does talk about psychosis and living with demons and things like that in previous music. I don't like talk about Lyme disease stuff much anymore. I guess because there's like an element of PTSD there. If you have Lyme disease or if you know someone with Lyme disease, you'll know why. It is fucking torture. And it was there for like 10 years. So I don't really like going back there in my head. Right. It's like fucking delete delete but I did and I am here and I am fucking doing what I wanted to do for all of those years so yeah it feels good like by no means am I like completely 100% healthy I don't think I ever might be able to be because it was misdiagnosed so long fuck it man I'm, I'm good enough <laughs> I mean don't need 100% I'm good enough to be doing what I love and that's what's that's what's fucking amazing um, that's it. Just a bit of self-triumph. Yes! That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, just not wanting to dwell on it. I've gone through years of treatment for PTSD. I don't consider myself healed or fully recovered, but I definitely consider myself a lot wiser. I like the idea of, like, he talks about in one of the songs where he's like, you just, the dance, like, you just stop, you learn to soften and you learn to kind of allow i don't remember his exact wording i'll just play it here so i got older and i learned to relax and i learned to soften and that dance got easier and i think that's a really good point like over the years if you have trauma if you have issues um you you learn about them and you learn how to accept them and find joy and find happiness in your life I mean, it's hard to explain. I don't know what it's like to have Lyme disease. I do know what it's like to have PTSD. And I do know that sometimes you just know that you can dwell and that you can fall back down a wormhole of dwelling and of a uh, uh, kind of circular logic and blaming yourself. And it's, it's torturous. So happy as hell for him that he got the treatment he needs. I wish him well, especially now as grand success is finding him and now he's got to deal with money and fame i don't know that not being signed by sony when he was 25 uh maybe that's a good thing like he didn't have to do like one of those 360 deals that they that they always do they take your music they take your merchandising they take all your various revenue streams he is an independent artist amazing now because i wonder i imagine he's still now that he's healed and or not healed but now that he's in recovery or very actively recovering and uh is still and is as prolific as ever is putting out his most kind of um important music now i'm assuming he is probably getting talked to by various record companies but i love that he's independent it allows him to write about mental health consumerism hypocrisy and politics without having to worry about the record company uh you know breathing down his neck um I would love for him to talk about if he regrets or doesn't regret at that time not being signed. Um, my guess is he's got a lot more freedom and he controls his music. And he doesn't owe Sony like $182,000. So all those things are good. Anyway, so I, I'm really enjoying his music. I think he's a really cool, interesting young artist. I hope he stays independent and prolific as he is and that he stays healthy. And uh, anyway, so this was edifying to me. I hope it was to you. Check out my channel for more Ren reactions, also for all different types of reactions and musical stuff. And yes, every now and then I'll do a short. Uh, <laughs> anyway, please consider subscribing. Check out my Patreon if you really want to support me and help make all these types of videos more possible. And until next time, keep playing.